So uh, today my talk is about uh, BGRPC support in Ballerina and how how we can write gRPC server application, server and client application in Ballerina language. So a uh, little bit about me. Uh, I started working with uh, gRPC protocol uh, since 2018 when we, when I'm trying to build gRPC library in Ballerina language. And since then, we, I came, we came a long way. And now we have like a stable library where we can build gRPC like live application very smoothly. And along this journey, we I also have privilege to write a book around gRPC with the experience we get uh, with custom in the city. And uh, that's about me. Uh, let me jump into the agenda of this talk. Uh, first, I'm talking about what's the Ballerina language is and what's the uniqueness about Ballerina. And then I will discuss about uh, gRPC support in Ballerina. So this, and maybe I'll jump into the live demo. So this talk mainly focus up on the demo. So uh, I will quickly go through the uh, slide deck and jump into the demo. Okay, uh, talking about Ballerina. Uh, ba Ballerina is a new programming language we designed and built for cloud native engineering. Uh, when it, when we are talking about cloud native application, it's all about bunch of APIs. Uh, it can be internal or in, uh, internal or external APIs which bundle together, integrated together to build an application. So when we are building a Ballerina programming language, we thought about this. Uh, we we uh, we, de we design in a way that uh, when we when uh, when a cloud native developer develops an application, how we can make it make their life easier. So uh, and we introduce set of high level abstraction into the language and some features where it makes uh, those development easier. So. Uh, so I will talk about those features in later slides. Uh, and so in high level, uh, this language is mainly focused about writing uh, services and cloud native applications. Uh, this, this language is not just a language. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a platform. We, we already have a lot of libraries uh, have in this language. And also we have this tooling support. All these are under uh, open source under Apache 2 license. So, if you uh, if you are interested, you can go and check on Ballerina platform GitHub repo. All the source codes are there in the organization. And when it comes to Ballerina syntaxes, uh, it's very familiar with other C family languages. So if you are familiar with other languages like C, C++, Java, uh, you will be, uh, it's very easy for you to read and understand Ballerina code, even write Ballerina code. Okay, uh, talking about the features of Ballerina, uh, here I listed only six area, uh, which I think it's important uh, to talk about when it comes to uh, reducing the complexities of writing uh, cloud native applications. Uh, there are much more than this, so I will quickly go through these things for now. Uh, the, uh, let me talk about the data orient part. Uh, data orient part, so uh, when it comes to uh, network applications, network interactions, uh, the things that we that we can send over the network is from one place to another is data pure data so object but object orient current object oriented orientation bundles data with code uh, to me it's which wrong uh, approach when it comes to native network interactions so in ballerina we uh, focus more about this and we heavily we make it easy for you to model the data uh, that program manipulates and the program sent back and forth over the network. So if you, you can see in this uh, fourth example, uh, in Ballerina, we have this uh, record types. Uh, the record type is nothing much. It's a map uh, with any data, any pure data. So uh, 
and uh, we have the we have the uh, in ballerina we have this uh, facility um, uh, support to convert json directly into the ballerina records and um, vice versa otherwise as well so and also uh, when it comes to data type um, when we define data types in ballerina that represents the data which uh, saved in the memory and also uh, it also represents the data which uh, transferred over the wire so uh, and also in record types we have uh, closed record and open record uh, Open records are one who one. It's not limited to the fields which is defined in the record. Uh, it's it can handle it can hold other fields as well. Uh, this is important because uh, let's say when it comes to consuming uh, an API which returns a big JSON value, but uh, we we all, in our application we only need to have, need to have set of fields. For their for our logic, so we can define only the uh, fields which which we are in, we are we need, and uh, still we can convert the incoming JSON into the record mapping into the record and do our operations. So those uh, data mapping is very straightforward uh, when it comes to uh, well-known data types like uh, types like JSON, XML, etc. Uh, so the other powerful features in Ballerina is uh, when it comes to working with data, uh, we have this integrated query syntaxes. So uh, its query syntaxes is more like SQL-like syntaxes. So uh, you can define. Uh, so let's say let's focus on the uh, code example. So we have this employee record array. So if you want to sort the, the Things we can have SQL, we can write SQL type code and sort it out. So even we have uh, where clauses to filter out, and those are very easy to read and understand. And in and also we have this tabular data. Uh, we have ballerina tables, ballerina string types, uh, etc. Or, or and all the primitive data type which is needed to to write. Uh, a good program, a good program, and also we have this XML support, uh, which integrate this functionalities, which is very similar to XQuery. So those database ma data manipulation uh, features are embedded in the language, so you don't need to worry about data mapping between the, uh, JSON to Ballerina type, etc. It will handle by the language itself. The other important part is concurrency. Uh, in Ballerina, we have a main concurrency concept called strands. It is lightweight and cheap, doesn't require uh, OS straight. Uh, so it's more like uh, Go routines in Golang. So uh, and also we within the function we can defer, we can group set of codes and group them into a worker uh, a concept called worker. That worker will run. And a new strand concurrently. So, if we are looking at the code, we have within the function we have two workers called T and L, and they run parallel. We can run concurrently, and then uh, the output we can again assign it to the main thread. So, this kind of asynchronous function can be simply right uh, using Ballerina language. So, other uh, so once we have this data manipulation support in Ballerina, the, the other aspect is the network interaction. So when it comes to network interaction, we have two parts. We are the producing network services and consuming network services. When it comes to produce network services, we have this uh, listener and uh, service concept. So listener is the one who listen to the uh, incoming messages and uh, dispatch into the service objects and we have uh, the service concept where it supports uh, two interface types like as uh, resource functions and the remote functions so uh, in ballerina we though we have a uh, overall service concept we have the, we define different service types for each network protocol for example for http we have http uh, service where 
it, it has the characteristics of uh, HTTP service like HTTP work, HTTP resources, and so forth. So the, the service which defines in uh, HTTP service uh, in RESTful service is contains resource function like. Uh, in the slide deck, slide quote, uh, we mentioned like uh, we have the resource function and we, we mentioned the HTTP verb um, and also the resources. And when it comes to GRP, uh, RPC style GRPC protocols, we have our service object contains remote functions and we have the actions already. So uh, by looking at the service, in uh, looking at the service written in Ballerina, you can uh, interpret uh, uh, the interface description from the language itself. And also uh, we support generating the interface descriptions like Open API GraphQL, but in gRPC, we are not supporting generating the protobuf file. Uh, we, uh, we are always going with contract for support. Uh, the other one is consuming network services. In network consumed services, we have the uh, concept called client object. Uh, the client object have remote fun methods uh, that represent the outbound interaction with uh, the remote systems. So uh, the point here is uh, when, when we have a client object, we can call the remote function. Those remote calls are represented as arrow side. So you can see in the code, uh, we, this, when we are calling send email, but by, call, by having an arrow sign that represent a network call. So for local calls, we have this dot sign. So we have this differentiation because uh, we can easily draw a sequential diagram uh, from the code. So uh, one thing we need, I need to mention here is, in ballerina uh, program we can have two representations one is textual representation where uh, we have the source code the other one is uh, the graphical representation we have which we have the graphical uh, sequence that so every function written in ballerina uh, has these two representations so in my in my demo i will show you what uh, the graphical representation of my code written uh, in later part Okay, the next feature is code to cloud. We are uh, in cloud native applications. The main thing is uh, we need to, once you create services, uh, you need to create uh, cloud, cloud artifacts and then deploy in the cloud environment. So in Ballerina we have, compiler, we have this option called cloud where you can pass the pass which artifact you need to build once you build the ballerina project so we supports generating kubernetes and docker artifacts and we uh, and we also have this cloud.toml config file you can override any configuration which need to pass into uh, the, the artifacts we create okay this is uh, very high level features of ballerina so and now i'm moving into the gr specific grpc support uh, like in other languages uh, uh, GM Ballerina also support all the uh, features and all the operation which supports in gRPC, uh, like tooling support to generate uh, source code using a uh, protobuf file, and authentications, uh, error handling, uh, and communication patterns. All the communication patterns are supported, and metadata, which RPC call related informations are passed into as key value pairs. Uh, next one is deadline. Uh, deadline uh, also supports on top of key-value pairs. Okay, let me uh, quickly go through one by one. Uh, first is the tooling support. Uh, like in other languages, we also in Ballerina also we have a special CLI tool to generate uh, source code uh, from the protobuf file. Uh, so we have this bell grpc command we can give the input for file name protobuf file path or file directory and we can specify which uh, the place where we need to generate the source files 
and we have this another additional parameter called mood where we, if you specify its service uh, it will additionally generate a skeleton bal file where all the remote functions embedded there uh, and it's easy for you to uh, program from from the skeleton okay i will show you in the demo in detail how we used uh, the other one is authentication. Uh, authentication, uh, we have, so like I said earlier, we uh, in Ballerina, we have uh, listener, uh, listener and the service. So listener is supposed to connect with uh, the network. And so, the tra so in GRPC, we support a whole bunch of security features from transport level security to application level security. The, Transport level security or, or the channel credentials are configured at listener level. And application level securities are uh, attached to the service via service annotation configurations. Uh, next one is error handling. In GRPC, error handling is very important. So they have these error uh, status codes predefined and they are. Uh, they are using when they terminate in uh, the connections, etc. So in Ballerina also we define the error, we define error types for each and every error code. So uh, let's say when you, if you want to uh, terminate the error, examine the connection by sending error status code, you can simply initialize the error uh, by uh, by passing the error message. Okay, uh, let's jump into the demo. So all the communication, uh, the communication patterns, I show it in the demo itself. Uh, so I took uh, the example in the GRPC website, uh, the route guide example. So it's very easy for me to explain and very easy for you to understand because you are already familiar with this example. And also you, if you need, you can compare the implementation with the other language. Okay, let me move it to the VS Code. I'm using VS Code for my develop my demo because uh, Ballerina has a very good uh, plugin for the VS Code. Uh, it shows all the syntax highlighting and suggestions and etc. And I uh, I already installed Ballerina this latest Ballerina distribution. So if you want to want, you can go into the Ballerina IO website and you can get uh, the distribution and install installation is very easy so this is the profile i'm going this is the route profile i'm going to use in my demo uh, this is taken from uh, grpc github repo uh, let me open the terminal so we all and we also have a, a json file where we have these all the features so i we will i will load this in the service application and use it in my application okay uh, first we need to create a new ballerina project i will call it a server we can call bal new command uh, and give a service uh, project name uh, once you create it, uh, you can see a new directory is generated, and within that we have this main.bal file. Uh, it spins the hello world, and this is the modules. So we IO module, we import that IO module and use the print ln functions to print there, print the message. So uh, we don't need this bal file, so I go and remove this for now. And we all we also have ballerina.toml file where all, all the manifest, all the metadata manifest of this project is contained there. So let's keep that. And let me generate the uh, sub files uh, using, uh, using the route, route proto file. And let, let me set out to as for the server in project B just created and let me set a move to service it will use the proto c compiler and uh, uh, generate the bytecode and convert those bytecode into the source code 
So this is the subfile. Uh, this is the generic subfile we choose for all with uh, all uh, in client and server side. This is the client code. I will discuss this in later. Uh, this is the template file. Uh, skeleton file we generated so it has this service object and we have this listener and it's initialized into 1990 port and we are it listening in 1990 port there and the service is named as route guide and it's the endpoint is now attached to the service so the uh, whenever the message come into the listener it will dispatch it to this service and we have this four remote functions so if you if you compare with the proto file generated with the source code you can see very similarities uh, looking by and by looking in the service you can uh, you can derive all the information uh, so uh, first i will look into um, i'll implement the get feature remote function which is the simple rpc one for now, I, I will return unsupported error messages here. Uh, so temporarily, we can uh, once we implement it, we can remove them. So let's say unsupported, not supported yet. Let me copy this to the other RPC remote functions. Okay. Now we only we, we need to implement this get feature function. Get feature function is it's uh, we get a location and we need to uh, check uh, what are the features attached to that point and return that field feature. If not, we will return an feed feature with empty name. Uh, for that, we first need to populate the JSON, uh, JSON file. The features from the JSON file I just showed you. So, for in order to populate it, let me create a new directory inside project and copy the JSON file into the project. So it's easy for us to read. And in IO, we have this IO API function called read file read JSON. So we can give the part here as a string param. Where are the objects? Okay. So when you look at the API docs, it, it uh, file read JSON returns an error and a JSON value. So you you can either uh, handle the error inside the function or you can return it. I uh, choose the option to return it. So in Ballerina, we have this check command. If you check it, it will return the error. Uh, so we don't need to handle it inside the function. So now we have this JSON file, and we need to convert this JSON file to the type we, we are interested, which is array of features. And then let's call file with JSON variable, and let's say convert the type. So it's very easy. We, we can just convert the JSON file into the Ballerina type. And then we can, we just, let's return the features here. We need to edit the returns function signature to return each array. So now the function is ready and we need to create a service level variable uh, to call the return features values. Uh, 
Okay, let me have a fine on variable. So we need to initialize it. We can initialize it uh, using init function. Uh, it's same like the constructor in Java. So it will be called when we initialize in the service. So let me call populate call this populate feature method and we, we have to check it and we need to return it here. So now we have these features ready. So in this remote function, we can iterate to, to the features. The features and we can and we check whether the there's a feature to the point uh, to the location location we get it from it has a request message so let me value and if it does we can just return the feature or we can return feature with empty name so for location we can set the value we get it from the input and for the name we will set it as mail okay now we have done the first remote function uh, so we can go and run so in ballerina we have the command called bell run once it run we compile the code and uh, run it uh, meanwhile while it's running i will go and create the client application as well let's call bell new client Call bell new client so it will create a new client new package for client and let's go and generate the source code Okay, you can see ballerina project client project is created and the stub file is the same as the clients uh, generated in the server side and we have this client template which is a main function and that main function is giving an error because we already have a main dot bell we'll go and delete that bell file okay so here uh, we have this client uh client object generated and that client object have all these remote functions and so we are initializing the client using endpoint url and from the endpoint we can call this remote function using this arrows network sign and pass the values and it will return a response so let me copy valid point values here And also, let me change the message print. So once we get a correct response, it will print get name uh, in the console. So let's go and run the client. Okay, the uh, uh, compile is successful and I'll get a correct feature which is New Jersey address. So let me go and quickly uh, do the server streaming one also. So server streaming, we will get a range and we need to uh, filter out all the features which is there in the range and then return that back. So for that, we first need to set the boundaries of the range. So let me use uh, 
Alan Paladina Library to get the mean and max of max of the uh, location. Location we get it from get it as uh, the input value. So it will be I. So what we are doing here is we get the minimum value of the point two pointers we get it from as an input message let me since it is same i'll just copy the same code and uh, edit it so we have the left and we need to have the right which is the max value and we we need to have the bottom boundary which is a latitude values minimum value of the latitude and we will have uh, the top value which is the latitude value of the max now we set the boundaries now we need to iterate to the features back again and build out the features for that uh, let me use a query expression query syntaxes uh, so we here we are iterating it through the features and select select all the items for now. I will change it set the feed just later. So it will uh, it will return list of results. Let me rename it to selected, and we can have these where clauses to fill out. out the locations and so first we will build out a name which doesn't have a name and then we let's build out locations where longitude is greater than or equal to left and we are I'll copy the same logic and change a little bit here right and again they are item location latitude is greater than equal to bottom and equal to top so now I wish we set the field um, set all the filtering and select all the features we needed to return. So we can just return the selected features as string or by calling to string. So here we now we have done the service part uh, for client side. I just copy the uh, copy the code. To, uh, to save some time, so I just need to type two other RPCs. Okay, let me go to the code. Uh, we first create a rectangular value uh, with values, and same like the simple RPC, we call the list feature function by passing the rectangular value just initialized. And uh, as a return value, we, we are getting a list of features. And those list of features are uh, I create it to the list of features and we print names. Uh, let me run the server and client again. And you can see list of features are printed uh, as an output. Okay, let me run the client. Okay, so I didn't save the client code. That's why it's not printing. Okay, uh, perfect. I'll get the correct output. I get the list of features which in the range, which uh, which in the we define in here. 
So now we have done both client streaming and service streaming. And I said that I will show you the graphical representation of this. So let me click on the, this diagram. So here you can see uh, this is the graphical representation we just write down. So, so we have this start and this endpoint is the uh, is the an actor in the sequence diagram, and that sequence diagram is the endpoint we are trying talking about. And we we are calling two remote network calls, a get feature and list feature, and that and all the logics created are shown in these boxes. So even you can go and edit this uh, values and here, so it will be shown in the code itself. So in Ballerina, diagram view in and the code views are synced together. So we need to have the these two representation all the time. Okay, now let's go and uh, quickly. I'll quickly copy the client. Uh, streaming part and the bidirectional streaming part uh, to save some time. So let me copy the client streaming one. Client streaming one is uh, we will get a stream of stream of uh, point stream and we need to calculate the uh, route summary from it. So let me import the missing pieces. We have this log error thing. And we need to calculate the distance. I just copied the calculate uh, the function from my nodes. Uh, let me uh, go through the code, the code, client streaming code from route, record route. Uh, what we are doing here is uh, we will get a stream of points. Uh, which travels and that um, we uh, and we at the end of the stream we need to return a route summary for the client the, when we go to the route summary definition you can see you have point count feature counts distance and the lap style so uh, i i initialize the local variables here and we i'm iterating it through the stream and I increment the point count so that we get the point count. And then we, I iterate it to the features and that fee, and then we check whether there's a feature attached to that point. If it does, uh, we will increment the feature count as well. And then we have we check whether the last point is a valid point. And if it is does, uh, we will calculate the distance between the last point and the current point and we replace the last point with the current point uh, and so in client streaming one you you can get an error from from the client client can terminate the connection uh, at any time and by sending an error so if we if the client terminates the error it it will um, will exit from the stream and return it as an error so here i will just log it the error so you can do anything when the client is do that it's dependent on the use cases and we need to calculate the elapse time so we first calculate the start time and the end time and then we subtract it to get the elapse time so there's one point to mention here so here you can see uh i didn't uh, when we are creating the value we i didn't mention the field name here it is because uh the field names and the variable name I created in the here is same. If if the field name and the variable names are same, you don't need to uh, mention the field name field name and assign the value there. You can just pass the uh, variable name variables so that it, in compiler level it maps to the correct field. Okay, let me just. Uh, quickly move it to the client uh, uh, by direction streaming exam remote function as well uh, before we move it to the client side. Uh, when it comes to by direction streaming, uh, I need to mention one point here. So in all our scenarios, we have the response, all the messages which need to send it to the client and we send it as one go. 
but that's not the use case for all all the other scenarios there can be situation where we have we messages are all the messages are not available at one go we have to send it on the fly whenever we the message is ready we, we need to send it back to the client so that use case is also supported in ballerina for that we we have a special uh client call uh caller those are already ge also generated at stops so we can use the call we can edit the remote function and uh add a call additional uh input parameter called caller this caller is same like uh stream observer in java and stream means colang so this is it's same like colang uh and from this caller we can call uh from this caller we can uh, send error message on the fly so if you are using a caller you can you can't choose the stream type so it's not allowed that compile level so we need to we need to remove the return type we need to edit the return type to remove the streams so now we have this caller input so i will just copy uh the remote uh, that uh bidirectional logic as well here okay so since so we have this uh route nodes coming as a stream route nodes is a, a location plus a location plus the message and those messages are coming as a stream here so we are iterating it through the stream and we generate we, we are storing all these key route nodes in a maps let me initialize the map here okay so map here so we check we first compute the key and check whether there are ex there are already exist uh in route nodes if this does we will uh, send it to the uh, caller if not we will uh, add it it in the uh, route node map and similar to client stream we will we can get an error from the client if does i will log that error here so we have done the service service part now and let me quickly go and uh, copy the uh, client code as well. So in the client code uh, for client streaming use cases, uh, we have we have two points defined in the array, and when we are calling the endpoint, like in other one. Um, unlike in other one it returns a streaming client it's because for client streaming and bidirectional cases we need to send multiple messages to the server in order to facilitate that uh, we have a client streaming client from the client streaming client we can call this uh, uh, function to send message one by one once you done all the send all the messages you can call complete method to say to server that we have done with sending all the message of the messages and we are closing it at our side and then we can uh, call the receive method uh, to receive the response from the uh, server and i'm just printing that here so let me uh, copy the uh, right direction streaming as well so i will quickly go through because i'm running out of time uh if you have any question i will uh i can explain it okay so let me quickly go through the bidirectional streaming thing as well so we have this route nodes array defined with all the values we need to send it to the server and similar to the client streaming when we call the remote function it will return a streaming client uh, there's there's one thing one point i need to mention uh, this receiving and sending is asynchronous it can happen simultaneously uh, so uh, so 
we need we cannot handle it by one thread so what i'm doing here is we i create a new function and inside the function i call the receive my met, uh, receive met, method and receive the nodes and iterate it to the nodes and call the receive function again and print the message and that function is we start a new thread uh, in start from the start keyword we can start a new thread it will return a future and in the meantime i will send iterate to the route nodes and send it to the server and once it's completed we can wait till uh the all the server responses are coming back to the client okay now that's it from that's it from the implementation side we have completed both uh grpc server application and the client application so we can run and see so let's run the server and also let's run the client as well uh, There's a compiler error. Let me check. Okay, there's a foot. Okay, survey is running. Now let me invoke the client. Okay, everything is perfectly fine. So this is the fin uh, route summary. We get it from the server side and these are the messages in the bi-directional streaming case. So we are done. Uh, writing both server and client. Uh, before we wind up, uh, I need one thing to mention about this uh, generating uh, cloud artifacts. So since we have this server, I will quickly go and uh, demonstrate how we can uh, generate these uh, build artifacts. Uh, in bell build command, we have this bell build command which generate the ballerina artifacts. And we have the, another option called cloud. Yeah, we can give uh, whether we need to generate additional Docker artifacts or the Kubernetes artifacts. So we can we just need to give Docker command here, so it will generate the Docker artifact. So if you need to, let's say you need to do some change, do some uh, configuration changes to the Docker um, image we generate. There's an additional file, um, config file called cloud.tml file. So you can use this tml file uh, to add additional configuration. So here I'm just copying, we are changing the container name uh, and container name and the version number. And also we, we use, here we use, uh, JSON file to populate the data. So I just ask them to copy those JSON file also into the container. Those configuration can be done to the TOML file. So once you run this, uh, run bell build uh, by passing Docker, it will, in addition to building the ballerina artifacts, we also build uh, Docker images and push it into the local repository. Here you can see they are generating those Docker artifacts. Okay, it's done. So you, you can run this command to deploy it in the container. Uh, so if you have, if you check on the target directory, you can see a Docker directory, and inside the Docker directory, you can see the Docker file. I um, don't, I don't have time. Uh, to run this, and I'll quickly go through how we can.
how we create a Kubernetes artifact. So same like Docker, we can have the option and give Kubernetes value. So it will generate the Kubernetes artifact source. Okay, so you can, uh, Kubernetes artifacts is generated. So in the target directory, you can see this server.yaml uh, file. Uh, you can change this configuration through the toml file. So you can, you can just, once it's created, you can just need to apply this command to apply, uh, generate the deployments. And also using the deployment, you can create the service uh, with node both, and then you are done. So that's it from the demo. So let me go to the slide deck again. So, okay, that's it from the communication pattern. In Ballerina, we support all the communication patterns uh, and we can write it very easy. And the other one is metadata. Metadata means uh, the RPC related information as key value pairs sent with the message. So we give the support to add those key value pairs in the message and send it to as send it as uh, like this message and for streaming one uh, we are since the headers are uh, should be at at the beginning of the stream so whether if we send the headers uh, later it, we are going to ignore that and for deadlines thing deadline uh, we already support deadline through headers so once you, we have this api called set deadline once we call the deadline with the deadline time uh, it will add a header entry so that we can handle it similar to the headers and also we have the api to check the cancel at server side by passing the headers Okay, that's it from the demo and the presentation. Uh, in summary, uh, Ballerina is modern uh, programming language optimized for writing integration and the cloud native environment. And the type system is designed to make the network data processing easier. And it, it has the first class uh, network services support and function with objects. And GRPC also supported that Ballerina Supporting Balena is very rich and we are still improving the experience. So that's it. And thank you very much for listening uh, to my presentation.